in many ways it was the mystery of the Sphinx that really broke everything open, it brought everything to the public attention. Now what we're talking about for the people that are uninformed is the idea that some of the structures in ancient Egypt are far older than conventional wisdom or conventional modern day archaeology, modern day Egyptologist. They would like us to believe that all of this spawned from a very specific time period. Dynastic Egypt as we know it going back to about 3000 BC was really a legacy of what I call now an earlier cycle of civilization. As a geologist with a geological eye, this was not weathered by wind and sand. This was not desert erosion and weathering that I saw on the Sphinx, the body of the Sphinx, which is very difficult to tell because it's been heavily repaired and reworked, but particularly on the walls of what are known as the Sphinx enclosure. The Sphinx enclosure is important because it preserves a lot of the details. And if you haven't, if the audience has not been to Egypt, they should realize that when they carved the Sphinx, it's all solid bedrock, only the head initially was above the ground surface. You carved, they carved down into the rock to free up the body, what I call the core body of the Sphinx. For centuries, the Great Sphinx of Giza has stood as a silent guardian of Egypt's Giza Plateau, watching over the pyramids and the Nile. Its lion's body and human head have inspired myths, legends, and scholarly debate. But beneath its imposing form lies a deeper enigma. What secrets does the Sphinx hold? And who were the architects behind its creation? The rediscovery of the Sphinx happened long after its original construction. For much of its history, it was almost entirely buried under sand, with only its head visible. In 1817, Italian explorer Captain Giovanni Battista Caviglia led an early excavation, clearing some of the sand to reveal more of the body. Yet, there were no signs of entrances or hidden chambers. The major breakthrough came in the 1920s and 1930s, when French Egyptologist Émile Barrez conducted a more systematic excavation, fully exposing the Sphinx's body. Evidence of subterranean passages led to speculation about what lay beneath this ancient monument. Could this be the legendary Hall of Records, a hidden repository of ancient knowledge? In the 1970s and 1980s, modern technology like ground-penetrating radar and seismographs was used by archaeologists such as Dr. Mark Lehner and John Anthony West. Their findings revealed anomalies, hollow spaces beneath the Sphinx, raising new questions. What were these voids for? Were they ritual chambers, tombs, or something more? These discoveries have sparked the imagination of both scholars and the public. Many speculate about ancient knowledge hidden within these tunnels and chambers, which remain largely unexplored. The idea of the Hall of Records, a fabled repository of wisdom from a pre-dynastic civilization, persists, though no solid evidence has confirmed its existence. As for the dimensions of these hidden spaces, some tunnels extend nearly 30 meters, with chambers reaching heights of 5 meters. The complexity and scale of these cavities astonish researchers, as their construction would have required precise engineering to avoid damaging the Sphinx above. Could a civilization over 4,000 years ago really have achieved this with primitive tools? One particularly mysterious feature is a metal hatch discovered on the Sphinx's head during a 20th century restoration. While some believe it's a modern addition for maintenance, others suggest more fantastical possibilities. Was this hatch a secret entry to hidden chambers? Could it be a relic of a lost technology designed by the builders for some unknown purpose? The question remains, who built the Sphinx? And how did they achieve such a perfect blend of form and function? The Sphinx is an impressive 240 feet long, 66 feet high, and 62 feet wide. Carved from a single mass of limestone bedrock, its weight is estimated at 200 tons. Its dimensions are comparable to a modern football field, and its height rivals a six-story building. 
Given the rudimentary copper tools available to the ancient Egyptians, this achievement seems almost impossible. While scholars attribute the construction of the Sphinx to Pharaoh Khafre around 2500 BCE, some researchers believe it may be much older. Evidence of water erosion suggests the Sphinx may have been exposed to heavy rainfall centuries ago, dating it to as early as 10,000 BCE. This theory challenges conventional timelines, suggesting the Sphinx was built by an even older, lost civilization. Could the Sphinx have been constructed by a forgotten culture, equipped with knowledge and technology far beyond what we attribute to the Egyptians? The discovery of hidden chambers beneath the monument only adds to this speculation. Were these spaces used to store ancient texts, or perhaps to honor deities through ritualistic practices? Yet, as we uncover more about the Sphinx, the techniques used to build it remain just as mysterious. How did these ancient builders move and shape the enormous stone blocks? Theories abound about the construction methods. It is believed that tens of thousands of laborers worked together, using wooden sledges and water-lubricated sand to transport massive stones across the desert. While modern experiments have shown this method is possible, some argue that a lost technology or unknown knowledge must have been involved. More speculative theories propose that the builders might have used advanced tools or sound resonance to manipulate the stone. The deeper we dig into the mysteries of the Sphinx, the more questions we uncover. But one thing is certain. As we continue to explore the hidden chambers beneath the Sphinx, the story of its creation grows ever more fascinating. History, it seems, is never truly set in stone. New discoveries and secrets lie waiting to be uncovered. Perhaps the greatest mystery of all is not what the Sphinx reveals, but what it continues to keep hidden. In the shadow of the Sphinx, we are left wondering, who built this ancient monument and why? How did they achieve such precision, and what was the true purpose of the Sphinx and its surrounding megastructures? The most common theory is that the Sphinx was commissioned by Pharaoh Khafre, who also built the second largest pyramid on the Giza Plateau. But some evidence calls this theory into question. Water erosion patterns on the Sphinx's body suggest it could be far older, possibly dating back to 10,000 BCE, when Egypt experienced heavier rainfall. If this is true, it would mean the Sphinx predates the Egyptian civilization by thousands of years, suggesting the existence of a forgotten culture. Could this lost civilization have been responsible for building the Sphinx? And if so, why are there no other traces of their presence? These questions fuel conspiracy theories that continue to captivate the imagination. One theory proposes that the Sphinx was built not as a tomb, but as an astronomical observatory. Its alignment with the constellation Leo during the vernal equinox suggests a connection to the stars, possibly serving as a marker of time or even a communication device with other worlds. Another theory suggests that the Sphinx and pyramids were part of an ancient energy system. Some believe the pyramids were energy generators, with the Sphinx acting as a control mechanism. The alignment of these structures with the Earth's magnetic field, combined with their proximity to the Nile, supports this idea. Though no concrete evidence backs this claim, it remains a compelling alternative explanation for their purpose. But the mysteries don't stop there. What other secrets might be hidden beneath the Sphinx? Beneath the Sphinx, unexplored chambers continue to spark speculation. Could these be the fabled Hall of Records? According to legend, this hidden vault contains the lost wisdom of an ancient civilization, possibly Atlantis. Though no one has conclusively discovered it, the search for the Hall of Records continues to intrigue explorers. And then, there are those who believe the Sphinx's builders had help from beyond this world. Extraterrestrial theories surrounding the Sphinx have persisted for decades. Some claim that the precision and scale of its construction are too advanced for the period, suggesting ancient Egyptians had assistance from extraterrestrial visitors. While this remains in the realm of science fiction, it highlights the fascination the Sphinx holds over the human imagination. Yet, even without the intervention of alien hands, 
the Sphinx and its surrounding pyramids are marvels of engineering. As we stand before the Sphinx, we are left with more questions than answers. What was its true purpose? Who were its builders? And why does it continue to mystify us after thousands of years? And so, the Great Sphinx of Giza remains, watching over the desert, guarding secrets that may never be fully understood. What lies beneath its pores, in hidden chambers, or in the past still waiting to be uncovered? Only time, and perhaps future discoveries, will reveal the answers. Until then, the Sphinx will keep its secrets, waiting patiently for the day when we are ready to understand what it truly has to tell us. If you enjoyed this glimpse into the mysteries of the past, you're absolutely going to love our next adventure. We're heading deep into the heart of Saqqara, where we'll uncover a monumental secret hidden within a pyramid, a 100-ton sarcophagus that defies conventional explanation. The sheer scale and precision of its construction will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew about ancient civilizations. Get ready to witness the impossible as we explore a site that pushes the boundaries of human capability. In the boxes in places like the Serapeum, which, which is right. one, probably my favorite site because it's, there's literally miles of tunnels beneath Saqqara. So there's, it's like a giant underground necropolis. Inside the Serapeum, you have 25 of these things, which are these single piece, like 100 ton granite boxes. They're insane. It's absolutely insane. And this one in particular is in an off limits area that we, we went into that's rarely seen by tourists. We couldn't, we couldn't make the box without developing specific tools to do it because the way they'd make it is they'd cut like five slabs and then bolt them together, you know, like a floor and then four walls and they'd bolt it together into a box. These are single pieces. So what's, what's impressive about that is it's like, you, you have to quarry this one block of stone uh -huh. and then dig it out. You have to dig all of the inside out and, and some of the examples of precision in the Serapeum are absolutely remarkable. You have perfect 90 degree uh, corners in some of the boxes, perfect 90 degree uh, interfaces with the lids and some of these walls maintain that geometry from like being 11 feet apart. Like that's insane. Like we, that's one of the major challenges of this is, is in designing and, and maintaining that type of relative geometry in a space where you can't afford to make any mistakes.